Hello everyone, Miss Silla here. I hope that you guys are having a great week. It's going to be a very warm week here for us in the Pacific Northwest. I'm in Zone 8B. In fact, today it got up to 85 degrees. It's going to be closer to 90 degrees towards the end of the week. So some of our crops are bolting or going to flower. So we'll be harvesting them as soon as possible and getting keeping everything watered and mulched to keep the moisture in there with wood chips. So that's what I've been doing um, the past, past year and it's actually working well for me. So come along with me in the garden let's take a walk and I'll have some tips tips for you on the way so this is the south part of the garden I used to grow a lot of plants on this side but unfortunately all this over overgrowth of trees are shading the garden so I mainly grow crops that thrive in partial shade so mainly potatoes now I do still have a strawberry bed right over there the strawberries aren't getting, getting enough sun, so I think they still have flower buds, so the strawberries are not growing as fast as they are in the southwest part where I moved most of them. This is a potato bed here, and I've got some volunteer potatoes near the compost bins right there. Those are all potatoes. And I think some of these could be harvested, um, new potatoes at least, which are the baby potatoes. So if you want to harvest them early, you can, but if you want to Wait for the bigger potatoes, then let them mature up to 90 or 120 days depending on the variety that you're growing. And if you are growing indeterminate type of potatoes, such as this red potato, try to heal them every three weeks or so to keep them covered. The tubers of potatoes will grow along the side of the stems and so they could be exposed to light and you want them covered, um, not exposed to light because they will turn green and if they turn green, they'll contain this um, phytochemical called solanine which is poisonous if consumed. Now if you're growing determinate type of potatoes such as Yukon Gold, you don't need to heal them. The potatoes will grow along the initial potato that you plant. Now over here are more potatoes. I've got a little <laughs> mess out here. Excuse all the mess. So here is the main garden now, southwest part. In this garden box are some garlic, elephant garlic, and some volunteer leafy greens. You can see some lettuces there. And I just want to show you these here are actually onions that I planted from scraps. And I'm regrowing them so I can get seeds. See that? So they're starting to bloom already. And I actually have a carrot top that I'm growing as well. From uh, carrot top, yeah, from scrap. And this should produce some greens for me you can eat them or let them go to seed and you get free seeds from that now over in this bed are some potatoes so this is mainly just a potato bed now I noticed some of them are wilting and they are not mature plants yet I did notice some yellowish color on the leaves and some brown spots so I'm going to go ahead and pull these out put them in the garbage can if you run into this issue with potatoes do not put them in your compost bin because I think they've been infected with some kind of a fungus or bacteria you don't want to spread that into your to your other plants so don't compost those so these are diseased plants they were fine about four days ago and suddenly they just started wilting and turning yellow than brown so we'll pull them out today and get them in the garbage can so we're going to start with our herbs some of them are in pots this one is Italian parsley going to seed, so we'll be getting some seeds from that. It smells so good. This one is thyme, and it's blooming as well. So right now it's the best time to cut them back. That way they'll produce more foliage for you instead of letting them flower. Here are some mints that I rooted from cuttings from another plant in the front of our house. This is actually a purple colored tree that I rooted from a cutting about two months ago now. It is in a one gallon pot and it's doing quite well. It's about an, a foot and a half tall. So I'm really happy about this one. Here is another, what is this? Actually, plant that I'm regrowing, this is actually a spring onion. See the flower buds? They are going to seed as well. So this, this is also from spring onion scraps that I bought from the store. Right here is sage actually part of it's blooming already rosemary lavender some oregano I actually harvested some oregano last week they are about to blossom 
So if you're growing herbs and you want to dry them to preserve, preserve them to use later, try to harvest them right before they blossom or bloom. That way they will contain the most essential oils. Lemon balm. All these herbs need to be trimmed back. More lavender, lemon balm again, and another oregano. And over on this side, got some snapdragon flowers. And here are a couple of rosemary shrubs. These were actually started from cuttings last year. Look at that. Look how much they've grown. So if you have any herbs and you want to propagate them, just take some new growth and root them in water and then plant them in the ground and you'll get more herbs. Let's head back towards the left of the garden. There's a row of tomatoes. They are still pretty, pretty young. And on this garden box are mainly leafy greens. Although I do have a potato plant volunteer. This is russet potatoes. I think it's its fourth year that it's made a comeback. And it is flowering so what I usually do is I snip off the flowers on potato plants sometimes they produce these potato berries or fruits that kind of look like small tomatoes green tomatoes and I don't really want the plant to focus on that I want the plant to focus on producing tubers or potatoes so that's why I cut them off so on, along the row here I've got some kale on the edge and these are this is a row of icicle radishes let me give you a closer look. You can harvest these, see that? And one of them's going to flower already because it's been so hot and it's been over a month since I sowed the seeds. Radishes are a great crop to plant. They grow pretty fast. Got some cilantro right here. And this is a row of, I believe, baby bok choy. And over on that side, I've got some seedlings. These are all lettuce seedlings. And on the edge are some spinach, I think some red romaine towards the corner there. And this one is actually my kale plant that finally um, went to seed. <laughs> I've had this I think for four years now and I just kept cutting off the flowers and eating them but this year I just let it go to seed and I think it's this is going to be the end of this kale plant but that's okay but look at all those seed pods I'll be getting. And over to my left here is the strawberry bed. Let me go to the other side so I can get you a better look. Here is our strawberry patch. I actually transplanted some plants from the south part of the garden last year, although I did not amend the soil with anything. And this year I used about five pounds of Vermisteris worm castings as a, as a top dressing. And the difference is pretty impressive. Look at all those plants. The leaves look lush. Bigger leaves, there's lots of fruits in there, although they are still green. But I'm just so impressed with how big of a difference it made when I amended the soil. Now if you've never used worm castings before, it helps improve your soil, the health of your soil. It contains beneficial microbes, bacteria, fungi, and also minerals and nutrients. It won't burn the roots of your plants because it's a slow-release nitrogen. So if you haven't used it before, give it a try. Um, this is pretty much what I use in my garden is worm castings. I do have a worm bin, although it does not produce enough worm castings for my garden. So the alter alternate is using Vermisteris worm castings. Also, worm castings can improve the flavor of your fruits and also lengthen the freshness of your harvest. So over in this little area here are a couple of tomato plants, some volunteer cilantro, Got a broccoli over there, another row of strawberries, um, another tomato, this is another broccoli, and this is my bay leaf tree. Look at that. It is doing so well. It sur survived last winter. I didn't think it would. This was a cutting from my mom's bay leaf plant, and it was actually, I think, only eight inches tall last year, so I'm really happy that it's doing quite well. One of my purple tree collards that I transplanted into the ground. I have one more in the pot here, but I'll be putting them in the ground. And the other one here, another purple tree collard right there that I transplanted. A couple last of week. lemon balm shrubs. These are actually volunteers. I did not have them last year. I think it's from one of the plants going to seed. If you're growing lemon balm, they spread like wildfire. So don't let them go to seed. Uh, instead, if you want to propagate them, propagate them from uprooting some plants and then plant those instead. Otherwise, you'll be pulling lemon balm throughout your garden. 
Over in this, in this garden box are some leafy greens along the row here. Let me get closer. I think there's some arugula, um, kale, maybe some baby collard greens, some scarlet runner beans along the trellis here, a couple of garlic volunteers, and a couple of sunflower volunteers right there and over there. And along this row here on the edge are some spinach. Let me get a closer look. Okay, here are some spinach along this row here. And they are starting to bolt. See that? Flower bud. The leaves are still okay to eat though. They haven't bolted yet, so they taste okay. And a lot of cilantro volunteer. Cilantro right there. Again, over there on the edge. Over here. So they kind of grew everywhere. Um, my cilantro plants went to seed last year, so they spread and I don't mind because we love cilantro so we don't mind having cilantro volunteers throughout the garden even on the ground here and <laughs> back again to this garden box next to it are some broccoli starts and over in this row are some dinosaur kale now I don't have any more scarlet kale I had to pull them out they were actually along this row they were all invest infested with aphids they were all over covered every centimeter of the plant Unfortunately, the aphids started uh, affecting the baby tomato plants, so they're not looking great. They started to turn yellow. They, they had aphids all over them as well. I had to pull a couple, a couple of tomato plants. Luckily, I planted some in pots <laughs> that I had in a different area of the garden away from the aphids, so those are doing okay. And over in this box are some scarlet kale. This is going to be my little microgreens garden box, so I'll be growing some baby kale in here and over in that box is let's see oh some barrage see those flowers shaped like stars we actually eat the flowers they taste like cucumber but a little sweeter so if you haven't grown barrage, barrage before um, it's it's a great plant that attracts beneficial insects especially bees and bumblebees and over in this empty space are actually going to be some zucchini plants like the soda seeds yesterday so um, hopefully they'll germinate by next week so this is the back side of the garden so that's what's growing in our garden just kind of starting out with a warm loving plants I don't have that many at all and um, we'll see how it goes I think this is a dinosaur kale that went to seed collard green that went to seed fortunately they didn't they were not attacked by aphids and again that potato bed over there and excuse the mess so that's it guys well thank you so much for joining me today everyone i hope that you enjoyed this tour and i'm going to harvest some radish and some leafy greens let me know what you're growing what you're harvesting and let me know how everything's going going for you guys leave a comment down below have a wonderful day everyone and happy gardening i'll see you next time